Okay, so uh, first lesson, I mean, that. so the resource book that I shared with you, uh, Hadley Wickham's, um, yeah, it, it's R for data science. And again, really, really valuable, um, totally free and uh, hot link to different different things. And, and uh, so, so really good. Um, so I'm not going to spend much time kind of doing the super basics of R. I just want to emphasize a couple of things. And as you go through it, you know, lab one will be for those of you who haven't used R and even for some who have used it a bit, it'll be the biggest pain because it's like, you know, the first time you used whatever software it's, you know, it seems like there's this big mountain of stuff there. My approach is always let me learn where the trail is to what I need to do. And as I need to do stuff, I'll I'll increment that. Um, so I just want to spend like half an hour getting you the point where you can get to the point. <laughs> um, and then we'll we'll continue working on elements of lab one uh, next week. But the the main thing I want to super emphasized today is, uh, and this goes beyond R, is file organization. Um, and my daughter, who's just started a master's at Queens, uh, hopefully she'll never see this recording. Her and I go through this a lot because uh, she's, she's like, she's got three kids. She's going back to do a master's kind of with young kids and I really admire her, but in finishing her, she finished her undergrad neuroscience at, uh, at Carleton, most of it by distance. She lives in Kingston. And so she had this sort of built in <laughs> consultant when it came to the stats courses and stuff she had to do. Uh, but it's really easy. I mean, Vivin, you, you're probably as prone to this as anybody else here. I'm certainly prone to it. You got a lot of things going on with files like Word docs. And now, if you haven't already, you know, data files and stuff like that. If if you start to sort of save stuff to your desktop or this folder over here and that, it can quickly become just this, this incredibly wild animal that's out of control. And it most the the dirty secret of like folks like me who are, you know, whatever reputation I have is something to do with data, right? Is I've spent most of my career organizing, fixing data, not doing some kind of neat new analysis of data. And it's because uh, whether it's some big federal program, you know, the sort of thing that data sets that Flavia and I look at in our, our area or, or that Vivian's working on right now, I guess the, uh, that Ontario Lakes data, um, it's often formatted in a weird way. You download it and you have this version over here and this filter there, and just it quickly gets out of control. So you have to be totally anal about organizing your data, your files. I'm gonna show you what our scripts are in a second, coding of it. Um, so yeah, be at least in this world, you know, I'm not responsible for the rest of your life, but in this world, be super organized about where your data is and how it's organized. And and a, a section of the of the uh, R for Data Science book that gets into this is um, workflow scripts and projects. And and again, Wickham and company are really good at explaining this stuff to people like us who, I, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't sit around, you know, drinking beer with guys in basements talking about our scripts and stuff like that. I just want to get done what I want to get. I want to work on my data. I don't. Um, and so uh, take a look at that, but that'll explain where I'm coming from in, in sort of introducing you to our Okay, so here's here's what everybody should be looking at. In our studio, it, it's funny. Sometimes our studio is thought of as 
as the stats program software in itself. It's just a shell. It's holding R. R is is the actual software. Um, and our studio is kind of a nice way. It doesn't seem that nice when you first look at it. It's confusing, um, but it's a nice way to kind of keep everything organized that you're working on in R. And I, I'll orient you in just one sec. Over here on the left in what's called the console, this is where, and everybody who starts working with R, they always do this, you know, Bob is assigned the value of three, and Flavia is assigned the value of uh, two, and Bob times Flavia is six, you know, all of that. So R is like an interpreter. That That's great. That's impressive, I guess. And you, and you can do vectors and matrices and all that kind of stuff. That's wonderful. But more important for us is actually using R to actually look at data and to draw publishable uh, plots, graphs, and for of our data sets for theses or papers or whatever. Um, as it says in that chapter six of the R for Data Science book, the way to keep yourself organized with different projects that you work on are what are called R projects. And I'll, I'll just, I'll start a new one here up in the top right, and then I'll go to one I've already set up for us. So I'll say new project. And uh, I'll make it a new directory. So this is whether you're on a Mac or you're on a PC or whatever, it's just going to make a new folder. Um, and this is this is asking me where I want to put it. And this will be slightly different depending on um, you know what kind of system you're using, but it's basically the what you're looking at right now is is similar to what do they call the file explorer or Windows Explorer or whatever. It's it's looking at your file structure on your on your computer. So this is mine on the Mac. It's uh, the desktop here. I've got my wife's ancestry files there in a folder. We won't look at those, or, although they're quite interesting. And I'll just start a new folder that I'll call. Um, Grad stats 35. And that's what I'll call this new project. And all this is doing is creating an R project. That's a, that'll organize things in a way that I'll show you in a minute. But it's it's a way you can find a place on your hard drive somewhere where you're going to keep all the stuff associated with this course beta set that you assemble, all that kind of stuff. So I'll create this project called GradStats35, since I've already got one that's called GradStats. And there it is. So nothing's changed in the console on the left. And the top right, we'll see in a second, That's that's where things that we assign, you know, variables that have values, like when I said Flavia has a value of four. Whoops. <laughs> That's the other thing to know about R, those of you who've used it. If you make a mistake, it's the worst at telling you how you screwed up. So it's often like a detective game. But notice when I, so I assigned Flavia value of four, look in the top right corner. It knows in this working session, I have this variable called Flavia, which has a value of four. Um, so let me show you a, a project that I established quite a while ago called GradStatsR. And you can see that list that's there. Those are various different projects I've worked on that have different data analyses uh, in them. I think this taper there, no. Okay. Is there like a daycare next door? <laughs> okay, let me just shut these for a sec. So there's a couple of windows here. Notice the bottom right window has a few tabs. One says files, 
And this is just like kind of like a file explorer, right? So the grad stats project that I set up has these different subfolders in it, lab one, lab two, lab three, lab four. And those are logically enough, those are scripts I've written and other stuff that have to do with the four labs that you're doing. And you will have access to these. So you'll be able to download scripts I've written and modify them for your data sets. That's generally, so this can't really be a course in R from first principles. So I get, I've done a lot of the work for you and then you modify it so that you'll sort of get the idea and you'll do enough modification. And some people come up with great ideas that I then steal and use in mine in future. That's your challenge, especially in terms of graphic stuff and that. But so you're, that bottom right corner, you're looking at the structure of my project that those four folders and that's reflected by the way if i go to those of you who have a mac know that the finder there's a picture of my uh hard drive or my file stored on here and um go to desktop and there's grad stats 35 so it, it's an actual folder that exists on my desktop And uh, that wasn't the one I wanted to show you. So grad stats underscore R, the one I was just, I'm now in, there it is. And it's just, again, the, there's the subfolders and there's a bunch of stuff under each lab, scripts that we'll look at and play with and see how they work and all that kind of stuff. So it's, and data as well. So it's just keeping things organized. And again, I I, can't recommend enough you know you you could start by just full-scale copying all mine and then modifying it that doesn't matter that's fine take my work please um but just keep it keep it organized don't store this over here and that over there because it'll it'll quickly get out of control so What I want people to do is if you could um, actually establish it, those of you who have R going, if you could actually create a new project, if you haven't done so already while I've been talking and call it call it something other than grad stats or grad stats 35, just to distinguish it. And what I'm going to do is um, I'll give you the link so that you can basically, what's the easiest way to do this? Let me, let me show you something before, before you, uh, but we'll set up after you got that uh, new project set up. And let me know if you're having trouble getting a project, a new project set up. Okay, so what I've done is in the chat room, I put a link to the lab one folder. It's got a bunch of scripts and it's got a couple of data sets and one data set in it. So what I want you to do is this is, I guess this is the challenge of the day. Get that folder into your R project that you just created. 
So you can download that folder. If you hit that link, you can download that folder and stick it inside the project that you just created, the R project you just created. I'm just gonna, <laughs> people look slightly mystified. Do you mind if I just have a look at what you're doing or is that embarrassing? Keep updating your Facebook site. <laughs> Yeah, so get get into your actual file explorer. Um, like this. This is outside of our. So, um, and, sorry, if you go to, go to uh, Google Drive, put that in link, and then uh, push download. Uh, up at lab here. and then download it into the folder that contains your art project. It should give you a menu then. Yeah, so the goal is to have a subfolder called lab one sitting inside your art project folder. Just like my subfolder lab one sitting inside my our project lab folder. Does that make sense, Vivin, or is that happening there? Um, so I'm in lab one. Do you want us to download all the files? Yes, yeah, so so just download the full if you go up to the folder. Okay. You watch what I'm doing here. Okay. Um, and up here, if you hit the down arrow and say download, oh, okay, then it'll it'll probably do a zip, but it'll download it wherever you want it to. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm saying stick it in the same folder you just created for your R project. See how it's giving me the choice of where to put it. So I'm going to put it in GradStats 35. And then I got to unzip it. So like in Mac, it's just double clicking on it. I think it's the same in, in Windows. So I'll go over there. So this is outside of R, right? So GradStats 35. I don't know why I'm double. And then I'm going to double click the zip drive I just downloaded. And now I've got a Lab 1 subfolder there. Now I'm going to go back over to R. And I'm going to... I'm going to open that project. And there, see the lab one folder is there now in the bottom right corner. <laughs> Somebody just appeared at the door. I don't know. <laughs> so did you get it in there Vivin? i'm doing it right now okay so the goal is with the new with your new project you just created, by the time you download it in the right place, you should see that folder sitting there. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm st I'm still in the one I just created, GradStats 35, and uh, I'm going to open up that subfolder, and there's a whole bunch of see the, see all the the uh, scripts there, and the first first one I want to do 
I'll just do a couple that we have time for here, but reading, saving, labeling, exporting a data set. That sounds pretty useful. So um, I'm going to click on that one and look what happens when I click on it. It should happen with each of you that you get that script. So what's in the top left corner? If you have, if you weren't a coder before, you're a coder now because all that is, and you've you've done this, Flavia. So it's a bunch. It's just like the Flavia is three, Bob is four, Flavia times Bob. Only it's a bunch of commands, all sequence, and I can edit them. And the thing that drove me crazy about my daughter's stats course is the prop had them doing on that in that console one line at a time, and if she screwed it up, she was screwed. This way, you know, you kind of build it. You you guys get the benefit. I mean, there's it's not quite as good at learning, but it's much less painful. You've got my R script here, which works, and then you tweak it, you modify it. I mean, this is for a particular data set that's also here. Um, you're going to collect your own data and you're going to run this script for those data, but uh, this will get you started with our command. So we're going to run that in a minute, but the first thing I want to do before we do that is look at the data. How? What's the most common way data are assembled? So not, we don't usually take, you don't take your field sheets and type them into R. Or you don't take your blood and type it into R or whatever. What what do people use to to collect data, to put data together? Yeah, spreadsheet, Excel. So, and this program reads an Excel spreadsheet and then puts it into R land, like gets it ready for R. That's great. But I want to take a second and look at it in Excel. Okay, because believe it or not. There's actually a lot, remember I said I spent like 90% of my time working with data before I get to this dramatic point of some fancy analysis or graph in R, that there's a lot of variability in what that spreadsheet looks like and what you can do to make sure the data are, are sound before you get into R. So let's take a look and you could, you guys could do this as well. Let, it's just a file that, Mike's, Mike Thorne's uh, fish data set. Uh, it's thorn underscore Chinook dot XLSX. So I'm going to get outside of R just to my file explorer. I'm going to double click on that. And that's going to bring up Excel. And there's, uh, there's Mike's data set. And this is Mike. Mike is the guy. Yeah, I got to check with him for permission to use this if I'm going to put this on uh, YouTube. But um, he took this course. Oh, he was at Western, a, a grad student at Western. Probably took this course 10 or 12 years ago. And I've used this data ever since because it, it's kind of a nice, simple data set. There's uh, 80 fish. These, it's real data. Um, there's Chinook salmon and uh, different populations in Lake Huron, maybe? Um, so you get an ID tag number on the salmon, you get the population, north or south, you get the sex, the ripeness, sexually mature, does it have a lamprey attached to it? <laughs> what I'm doing this. Um, fork length of the fish, uh, snout, height, and hump height. I don't know, it's a fish thing. Um, so, so totally dumbass, simple point I want to make here but it's not trivial. This is the classic format of data. So those of you who, you know, I, I, I remember vividly from Colin, I think, uh, you know, stuff coming out of the, whatever gizmo it is he used to analyze. It's, oh, it's totally different. There's, there's multiple observations and the blah, blah. That's not Colin's voice, but um, so, so, by the time you get to R, I mean, there, there's ways to deal with that within R, but my 
my preference, strong preference, again, along the lines of keeping the data organized and straight. Viv, and this goes for you too. By the time you get to R, you want observations are rows and what you know about the observations are columns. And that's what we've got here. We've got the tag number of the fish. You know, that first fish is N35M or whatever. And then the population, and that's, Viv, and that's a, uh, is that a qualitative variable? Yeah. I'll let you sorry, know. just cut off there for a second, sorry. Yeah, that's a population, pop is a qualitative variable, right? It's either north or south. And then sex, another qualitative variable yep. or categorical variable, ripeness, it's ripe or it's not. Lamprey, it's got a lamprey attached to it or it doesn't. And then the, the last three are quantitative. They're measured, I think, in millimeters. Um, yeah, it wouldn't be 70 centimeter long fish. Anyway, okay. So, but the key thing is get your data in that form. Um, so, and Excel is by far and away the easiest way, place to do that. I spend a lot of time, you know, when I spend the most time doing it, when I'm getting bloody marks done for courses at the end, you know, they, they did done this, there's this group project where there's all these evaluation, all this, and then getting to the point where I've got student number, student name, this mark, that mark, this mark, they're worth this much. Here's the final mark. Here's the letter grade. Same thing. It's a data set, right? So check that out. Look for weirdos in your, you know, your coding where there's, you know, 400 kil uh, kilograms of Mujiosha in the in this plot or whatever, this is the place to do it. And um, the gross term, <laughs> a prof of mine, quantitative probably, you get on your hands and knees with the data. <laughs> Terrible. But, you know, you're really looking at the values because, you know what, a lot of times with the, with the software that's used in different disciplines, Get it right into that, uh, you know, the the morphometric analysis. What you, you never even see the data as it floats right through to a relatively sophisticated analysis. And this first lab is all about make sure the data sound. Get to know the data. It's your friend. Um, so so check out that spreadsheet when you're assembling your data. Check it out and get it ready for R before you go there. Okay, we're getting dangerously close to four o'clock. But I gotta get you to do what is <laughs> I gotta get you to do a, an R script. You probably are Flavia is way ahead of me. She's done three or four of the scripts already. Hmm? <laughs> okay. So I said before that the the script. So the file we're looking at is reading, saving, labeling, exporting. Just for the sake of argument, I'll put one other one up here that we'll do before we go. Um, uh, let's say box plot. I love box plots so much. Let's do a box plot one. So notice when I tap on them, they appear over here as tabs. There's the reading, saving one. There's the box plot. And if we look back at the reading and saving one, um, you'll see lines that start with hashtags. Those are comments. That's me reminding me what I was doing. I can make comments. It's not an R command. It's just something I want to remember about what I'm doing. So the first line says load necessary packages. In R, R is open source, right? It's free. It's it's created by, I would guess, people largely who live in their basements and they, they write these scripts or these packages to do different analyses um, and carry out. And it's cool because unlike, you know, I don't know if anybody's used packages like SAS or SPSS, those ones cost thousands of dollars. They're created by, uh, you know, in, in big office buildings or whatever. So you get these, folks um, much like our computer science majors who work on these scripts and then they contribute them to the community. Um, and 
they are what are called packages. So when I'm writing an R script, I might use some packages someone else has written that I've incorporated into uh, the analysis that I'm doing. So the the start of the script is the time to load up those packages. And in this case, there's two packages I load up. One's called read Excel and the other one's called write Excel. Um, so that's, you can probably guess what they're for. They're to enable me to take an Excel spreadsheet and read it into R and uh, apply that format. The other one's called XPSS and that's just a helpful thing to label variables. So the cool thing you can do with scripts is I can highlight just a few lines and just run those lines. So as I'm working on a R script, I can run a few lines and make sure it doesn't screw up and then I'll run a few more lines and then eventually run the whole thing. So if I just run those and then down below, <laughs> I screwed up somehow. Okay, and then, so I've loaded all the packages I need, and then I want to actually read in the spreadsheet. So the line that I've got there, it says Chinook, just like we said Flavia or Bob, it says Chinook, and then it's got this right pointing, I don't know, I don't know what just happened. <laughs> It just stops. What's going on? Are you still there, Vivin? Still here. I just stopped sharing for some reason. Did the projector go off or something? Yes. What the heck's going on? I don't know what the heck. Yeah, there was a glitch in the projector that bothered my uh, here. <laughs> okay. I must have hit a button when I was trying to move that annoying Zoom menu out of the way. Okay. So... The next line I want to run is actually reading that Excel spreadsheet into what's called an R data set. <clears throat> so I've just called it Chinook. And this command that I've highlighted, read Excel, read underscore Excel, and then it just gives the, the file um, direction destination of the Thorn underscore Chinook, the Excel spreadsheet. So let me run that and see if it works. And it does notice up in the top right corner, there's a barrel, just like Flavia appeared when I assigned that to before. We got Chinook. It's uh, 80 observations of eight variables. And if I tap on this little baby, um, this little pup spreadsheet on the right, you can see over in that top left, you'll see the data set. Isn't that cool? So, And that's, this is my first chance to say, yeah, I got the data, the data is working because at each of these points, of course, things can screw up. Like a, there was a screw up in the spreadsheet, I didn't realize whatever. So I'm checking. And then the next thing I do, and I, I won't go through it line by line, but it's a really useful thing and not necessary thing. The data is in R now, can be analyzed, but I attach descriptions to each of the variables you know, explaining what they are, because five years later, I've forgotten what snout is, that it's snout height in millimeters. So I just attach these little descriptions. They're like labels in Excel, if you've ever used those. And the other thing I can do is um, establish uh, words for the different levels of the categorical variables. So that's what the next few lines are doing. And then I can save the file in three different formats. One is an R format, 
So easy, you know, all the variable labels and everything attached to it, ready to analyze in R. But I can also write a new Excel spreadsheet from that with the labels on it, or write uh, those of you who are familiar with CSV uh, format spreadsheets. So that's all in here. You don't have to do them all, but this just shows you how to get your data once you've got it um, into a format that's ready to be analyzed by R. So what I did there is just uh, Command A or Control A if you're on a PC. So I, I uh, highlighted the entire script and I say run and it just ran everything and has created um, if you look in the bottom right, these new data sets, Chinook underscore labeled CSV, Chinook underscore labeled XLSX, and Chinook table dot RDS, which is the R data set. So, so that's all this spreadsheet or this script does. It just brings in the data, gets it ready for analysis. So in our last three minutes, <laughs> we're actually going to draw a picture. So the other scripts which you can play with that are in that lab one folder do stuff like uh, bivariate plot or, or uh, group box plots or whatever. Let me do a group box plot. That's kind of cool. So same kind of pattern you'll see where I load the packages I need at the top. And then you now know the basics of, you know, variable names are assigned to different things. It might be a string of text. It might be a number. So let me just run this one and we'll see what happens. And if we go over to the bottom right, if it's worked, so part of what it did, if we look at the console in the bottom left, is it's got some basic stats for uh, one of the variables. I forget which one being done here. Uh, it's back, oh, um, snout. Height. So you can see those numbers in that table in the bottom are different, are, are uh, median and, and standard deviation and such for snout height in the different groups. But let's look over the tabs in the bottom right. You see plots, and there's pretty beautiful plot. And this really shows you, um, there's, there's a lot of information in there. It shows you the value I was talking about four box plots, especially when you're categorizing them like this. So this is for snout height. And notice we've got uh, these categories here. This, I mean, this is a pretty good format. In, and you can see within the command that generated this, I've got it commented there, you know, how you tell which categorical variable to use for which of the rows and columns. But we've got immature, and ripe males. So we got a comparison of the whether there was a lamprey attached or not. So you got all sorts of information about categories, what the median was. So it's the same scale on the y axis for snow height and how the variability differed in those groups. So this is what I mean by, you know, there's no fancy analysis here. There's no two-way ANOVA with a triple back repeated measure or anything like that. But it's really showing a lot of information about the nature of the data with quite a simple plot, but with that information that um, is behind a box plot that you don't get with the just the mean and the standard error bars. So um, have a look at that. The what, last thing I'll show you before we break up is changing stuff because a big part of what you're going to do you know I don't have you going through the agony of writing these from scratch but um you do you do want to um be able to modify these to actually look at data sets that you're collecting. The lab one is all about you assembling that data set that has different categorical and quantitative variables. So you wanna be able to go into these, change them, and then run them with 
with your data and different parameters that you're choosing to look at. So let's just for the sake of argument, let's replace note pump and um, run the whole thing again. So there's a couple of things I did. First of all, I'll show you the results. So now we've got hump height, different data set, but same configuration. And this is another valuable, totally unsophisticated technique, but in, a, in your thesis, for example, if you're showing different quantitative variables, you really, you've got to get the reader or if you're giving a paper at a conference, you get them oriented once. So immature, ripe, male, female, and then bang, bang, you know, a couple of different variables in a row. So they see the pattern. And what R is doing is, as I ran that second one, is it's sort of, I'm still on the plots tab, but I go back in the arrow and it's got them all saved up there. I can take that export that and and like stick it in my paper or stick it on a, a PowerPoint slide or whatever. So it's it's pretty nice. Okay. But the the other thing I wanted to um the other thing I wanted to show you is I made that change from snout to hump. And I, if I decided, well, uh, I really shouldn't have done that. I, I wanted snout there. So I can change it back. And then I can save different versions of this. If you, if you wanna make some changes and then make sure you've still got mine in case everything screws up, you can say, okay, snout, group box plots in that same folder. And then, you know, it's like having different versions of a Word document that you're working on. So this is the top left is really just an editor, script editor. And then you can run either the whole thing or different lines of it to make sure it's working or, you know, is it finding the file that you want it to be finding, that, that sort of thing, okay? So, <laughs> That's our first whirlwind tour into intro stats and into R. Um, take a look at lab one. The first couple of things are like, as I said, finding that really great and really horrible graphic from published stuff in your area. And um, take a look at, look at candidates for the data set you want to assemble. You'll see the criteria that I have there for it. I need to approve your data set. Believe me, it's in both of our best interests. So the easiest way for me to do that is if you think of something, just send me the spreadsheet, right? If you're thinking of it. And uh, I'll say, yeah, or because, and I don't mean to patronize you. Sometimes it's unclear to people first, is this a category? Is this a response variable? Can I use this? And um, do that. In the best circumstance, you're going to be able to pick a data set that's directly related to your thesis work. That's great. Sometimes it's not gonna be possible to do that. You can use data that your lab has collected in some other context. It doesn't have to be your original data. Um, sometimes people enjoy, they do stuff like stats from basketball players or whatever. Like it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's obviously most useful if you can apply to the thesis stuff later. But as I was saying, we can talk about that separately for people who have this individual need of, you know, looking at this kind of data and it doesn't really fit into, we, the data that we, you assemble for this, I've got to make sure that you can use it for all the different stuff that we do through the course, right? That may not exactly align with the stuff that you analyze for your thesis, but either way, I, it would be great if by next week when we're talking, you've got a data set that I've looked at and we're going with it, because that way we can make the most progress 
possible in the, the shortest period of time. <laughs>